Hello guys, welcome back and in this video we are going to demonstrate tooth preparation or crown preparation on the mandibular molar for a PFM crown. So to make a crown preparation, we use a hand piece which is used to rotate the diamond burrs that are useful for crown preparation. Likewise, we have kits available for these diamond burrs that are useful for preparing tooth. In this burr kit, we have round end taper burr which is used for occlusal reduction and functional cusp beveling. The next burr you can see is a flat and taper diamond burr and we make depth orientation groove and we do labial reduction with a flat and taper diamond burr. In this kit, you can see a pear shaped burr which is also known as round inverted cone burr. We will be doing occlusal reduction in this demonstration with this round inverted cone burr. You can also appreciate small wheel diamond burr that is used for lingual reduction for a PFM as well as for all ceramic crown preparation. So this is a long needle burr. This one which is used for initial proximal reduction and then we continue the proximal axial reduction with a short needle burr which is relatively shorter. We have end cutting burr for making a shoulder finish line that is a gingival marginal line and this is a double cone burr. So a double cone burr is used for lingual or palatal surface reduction. In this burr kit, we have these color coding burrs. So the yellow line burrs in this burr kit are used for finishing and polishing the tooth preparation. So before starting with the tooth preparation, we record the anatomy of the teeth with the help of this putty index. A pre-treatment putty index is made either with the addition or a condensation silicon that is kneaded into a small ball and adaptive over the tooth surface. And once this ball of the putty index is set, we cut it sagittally, not in the middle but over the cusp with the help of a blade. Once we get this pre-treatment putty index, we start with the occlusal reduction. Remember guys, it is very important to make adequate room to accommodate metal as well as to mask the porcelain over the metal. So in order to make a PFM, we have to make sufficient room for the metal as well as to mask the porcelain over the metal. So tooth must be adequately prepared to have a successful PFM crown. We check the occlusal anatomy with the help of this putty index. So for a PFM crown, non-functional cusps are reduced around 1.5 mm and the functional cusps that are the buccal cusp for the mandibular molars and the palatal cusp for the maxillary molars. They are reduced to 2 mm. In this demonstration, we have done occlusal reduction with this round inverted cone burr which is also known as a pear shaped burr. You can see in the occlusal reduction we are recreating the occlusal anatomy of the teeth. So a prepared tooth should look like miniature of the original teeth. We are following the previous anatomy of the teeth while doing all the reduction with minimal tapering. So a prepared tooth looks like a tiny version of the original teeth. Overall reduction of 1.5 mm is done which is equal to the non-functional cusp bevel. So first an overall occlusal reduction is, is done and then later we do the functional cusp bevel. Occlusal reduction is done one cusp at a time. Check the occlusal reduction with a putty index and it should follow the pre-existing contours of the teeth. In case if the teeth are retreated, cusp pulp preparation is going to be relatively flat. Remember the rule, pre-existing anatomy. Check the preparation with a putty index and occlusal clearance with the opposing teeth. 
You can also take bite record from the wax to check the occlusal clearance from the opposing teeth. So this is the reduction we see in the putty index. Now we are proceeding with our tooth preparation with the labial reduction and first step in the labial reduction is making the depth cuts or the depth orientation grooves. We are using inverted cone burr for making depth cuts. You can also use a round burr or flat and tapered burr to make the depth cuts. Thumb rule for labial reduction is biplanar reduction which means labial reduction is done in two planes the gingival plane and occlusal plane which is incisal plane for the anterior teeth one point five millimeters of the labial reduction is done for pfm crown with a modified shoulder marginal line remember biplanar reduction for the labial reduction two planes are gingival plane and occlusal following the anatomy of the teeth. When we are working on posterior teeth, gingival reduction is very important because occlusal reduction and functional cusp bevel will automatically form the occlusal form of the biplanar reduction. For anterior teeth, labial reduction in the biplanar is with gingival and incisal plane. It is very important to avoid continuous or back and forth motion of the burr as it can result in unwanted deepening of the depth grooves which will result in non-uniform reduction. So hand pieces moved either push or pull which is a unidirectional sweeping motion while reducing the crown. Buccal preparation is extended as far as possible into the proximal embrasures without opening the contact or nicking into the adjacent tooth. So we keep checking it with the putty index. The black biplanar reduction. And once we have achieved the labial reduction, then we proceed with the lingual reduction. On the lingual surface, one depth groove or depth cut is enough. Using a push or pull stroke, a definite margin is created. And margin should be preferably supra gingival to conserve the tooth structure so axial lingual reduction is done from 1 to 1.5 millimeter if you are using metal in the lingual surface for a pfm give a deep chamfer for a lingual metal collar but nowadays we mask porcelain all over metal all throughout the crown so in that case we continue with a modified shoulder margin Check the tooth preparation with a putty index, the amount and configuration of the tooth preparation we achieved. So a uniform reduction is achieved which is checked via a putty index. Following the buccal and lingual reduction, now proximal contacts are to be opened. This is one of the trickiest area to prepare and good hand skills are important. At this point, don't attempt to make a marginal line. The goal in mind should be only to open interproximal contact without damaging the adjacent tooth. And for this purpose, 
you can place matrix band to avoid any iatrogenic damage to the neighboring teeth so a long needle bar is placed parallel to the long axis of the tooth slightly above the interdental papilla it is important to avoid damage to the interdental papilla so in posterior it is called col and from our perio knowledge we know it is a non keratinized tissue which is highly susceptible to infection so avoid damage to the col lingual and labial margins are merged into the proximal margins and we create a definite continuous supragingival marginal line so labial and lingual margins are merged into the proximal margins to create a continuous marginal line end cutting bar is used for a shoulder finish line so as you can see with the help of this end cutting bar we are creating a shoulder finish line a well defined uniform shoulder finish line with the help of end cutting bar buccal cusp for mandibular molars and the palatal cusp for the maxillary molars are the functional cusp which withstand the occlusal forces therefore they need to be reinforced with greater thickness and to achieve this functional cusp bevel is given in a preparation you can give bevel at 45 degrees angle and functional cusp bevel is given up to 2 mm for a pfm as well as for all ceramic crown however They, these are considered considerable variations around these values functional cusp bevel helps in avoiding creation of occlusal interferences in ex excursion movements and to avoid any porcelain fracture so functional cusp bevel in itself helps accomplish the buccal reduction in two planes the last step in tooth preparation is finishing and rounding off all the line angles and buccal margin can be lowered from supragingival to equigingival at this point with a finishing bar if it is needed mandibular posterior teeth have inbuilt lingual inclination and therefore a second plane reduction for the lingual axial wall is only achieved by rounding off the preparation along the occluso lingual junction so rounding off all the lying angles finish the lingual margin of the preparation extending into the proximal margin and the same bar can be used for finishing and giving a modified shoulder design to the marginal finish line so shoulder design to the marginal finish line with the help of a finishing bar ensure there are no sharp line angles or point angles that remain in the preparation make sure you round off all the line or point angles because this area could cause stress concentration and failure of the restoration check the occlusal clearance and in the patient palatal or lingual occlusal clearance you can check with the help of a mouth mirror finish the entire occlusal preparation make sure that cuspal anatomy is maintained 
round off all the line angles and the point angles the final look of the preparation should be smooth and should be free of undercuts when seen occlusally all 360 degree of the margins should be continuously visible close your one eye while observing because if you see with both the eyes open undercut can be perceived as near parallel surfaces special care should be taken to check between proximal and buccal or lingual reduction as these are the common sites for undercuts there should be no undercuts the crown axial wall height should be more than 4 mm continuous margin that follows the gingival contour so margin should be smooth and well defined there should not be any damage to the adjacent teeth and there should not be any sharp line angle or point angle each wall should have a 6 degree tapering and there should be open contacts with the adjacent tooth so this is about the demonstration of a pfm crown on a mandibular molar hope you have enjoyed this video like and subscribe to the channel